Good afternoon. You are welcome at St. Philip in Easy Catholic Church. We are delighted that you are here with us to worship. In person or online, you are a vital part of our community and you are loved. At this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones and devices so that you do not disturb the Mass. Thank you. Please stand, greet one another, and join in our singing our gathering hymn. First. Brothers and sisters, as we begin our celebration today, let us first acknowledge our sins and ask God for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you embrace the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you walked through the valley of death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to the reign of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God.
of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The Word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. You are my God whom I seek. Oh God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines, my soul thirsts like the earth parched, lifeless without water. My soul is thirsting. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. Thus I have gazed toward you in your holy place to see your power and your glory. Your kindness is a greater good than life itself. My lips will glorify you. My soul is thirsting. My soul is thirsting. 
my soul is thirsting for you, Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. With exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting. My soul is thirsting. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. For you have been my help. You have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you, your right hand holds me firm. In the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting. For you, O oh Lord, my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. The Word of the Lord. and my brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, 
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. We, um, we heard this gospel today, again, from uh, Matthew. I'm saying again because it's the continuation of the gospel of last uh, Sunday. And um, Jesus today speaks to him, again to his uh, disciples, the closest friends, about a few things. And... He says, he talks about discipleship, he talks about self-sacrifice, and uh, the true cost of following him. In the beginning of the passage, Jesus reveals to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer, and ultimately be killed. Anytime we hear Jesus going to Jerusalem, is like a, a, a reminder. A reminder to himself, a reminder to the, his disciples that he's going there for a purpose. And that's his goal. That uh, he's going to suffer, die. Peter, as usual, you know, very quick jumps in and uh, takes Jesus aside and he rebukes him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And this, the context of this reading, like I mentioned, is close, co closely tied to the last uh, gospel, last week's gospel, when Peter confessed his faith in, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And now, Jesus shows him what messiahship entails and what it means to be a true disciple. Be, Peter has just identified Jesus as Messiah and Jesus blessed him for his confession of faith. However, Jesus told the disciples not to tell anyone because they do not yet understand what messiahship means. They still think of the Messiah as a warrior like king, like David. And now he begins to show his disciples that he must suffer and die. Having so recently been confirmed in his belief that Jesus is the Messiah, Peter cannot understand these, these last updates, the breaking news. We can't fault him for this. Because the cross became understandable only after the disciples saw the risen Christ. There is no resurrection without crucifixion. Peter has the decency to take Jesus aside though. So that his rebuke is in private rather than public. He must surely feel that Jesus is just having a bad day. And while Peter addresses Jesus as Lord... Peter crosses a line, challenges his Lord leadership. No rabbi would tolerate such defiance. Disciples are expected always to follow their rabbi. In this case, Peter 
has gone too far. But we should not be surprised that Peter fails to understand. There is power and wisdom at the cross, but it is too much to expect that Peter can see that until he sees, can see that until he sees the resurrected Christ. And Jesus turns to confront Peter face to face. In this incident, Peter becomes Satan, the tempter. Jesus sees Peter's intervention as a spiritual stumbling block, something that has the potential to cause Jesus to cause Jesus to stumble on his journey to Jerusalem. And Jesus ca- cannot ignore this incident. He must put Peter firmly in his rightful place. Peter did not understand this, at least not at the moment when Jesus first revealed it. Peter allowed fear to tempt him to interfere in Jesus' act of salvation. And this is why Jesus rebuked him so strongly. It was a loving rebuke meant to free Peter from his fear and to give him courage to embrace the sacrifice Jesus was about to offer. We should take note, the church is always tempted to take the world high road instead of God's low road. We are tempted to put our faith in the world's methods, any sort of advertising, maybe fundraising, and, or etc., instead of God's methods, which are related to cross, preaching the cross, taking up the cross, serving the needy in Christ's name. Cross is not a fashionable word in the vocabulary of a Christian. Though we're supposed to be the disciples, we try to run away from cross. We are afraid, like Peter. We try to dodge that way. We are tempted to evaluate ministry by standards which any account of CEO would be comfortable like we want to make sure about the membership check all the details regarding membership, the attendance, the budgets and goals and objectives the mission of, of our community instead of the standards of the one who has nowhere to lay his head and whose throne was on a cross. There are certainly ministries that are both faithful and successful, but it is imperative on any ministry to re-examine itself often to see if it has abandoned the cross. So there is no ministry, no right assessment without cross. Ministry that sells is not always ministry that saves. Ministry that sells is not always ministry that saves. And Jesus' instruction shows how we will share in his gift of salvation. In order to rise with Christ, we must freely die with him. We must deny ourselves, meaning all selfishness, all sin, and imitate Jesus' heroic sac- sacrifice. The result will be that we are united with him in his death and in his resurrection to a new life. For those who have eyes to see, there is plenty of evidence that Jesus was right when he said that those who want to save their lives will lose them, and vice versa. People who pursue their own happiness most selfishly are constantly on the move, looking for something they may never find. It's just enough to turn on the TV. Celebrities move from one spouse to the next, always seeking but never finding satisfaction. Business executives with money enough for a dozen lifetimes break the rules and themselves try to amass just a little more. The reward of cross-bearing is life. 
What does Jesus mean by life? The Christian life with its costs and rewards begins when we first begin to take up our cross and follow Jesus. The person who is willing, willing to lose life in Christ's service is freed from fear of death. The person for whom Christ is more important than professional, profession, possessions is freed from slavery to materialism. The person who resists temptation finds himself or herself stronger when the next temptation rolls around. The employee who maintains integrity in the face of temptation can face a mirror without feeling shame. The person who sacrifices an afternoon of playing golf, I'm saying golf could be anything, to help a person in need gain that sense of self-worth. Jesus gives us a picture of people who reach the end only to find that everything that they owned is gone and everything that they need is beyond their reach. And we are reminded of Lazarus and the rich man and the great reversal that each of them experienced and that gap that separated them. We must strive to serve. We must live sacrificially. Put God's first God's will first. Unite ourselves to Christ and make love for our neighbor, our mission in life. That is what, what Jesus did. When we do this, we take up our cross, follow him, die with him, and are prepared to share in his life, resurrection. This is the only way to eternal life. So let us reflect today upon the words, take up your cross and follow me. This is Jesus' most sacred instruction to us all on how we should live and how we will share in, in his gift of eternal life. Jesus uses the language of the marketplace to ask, or what will a man give in exchange for his life? Consider that question. What value do you place? On your life, what cross in your life are you fearful for, of? What act of sacrifice do you avoid? Let us remember that following Jesus involves a cost, but the reward is immeasurable. May we have the courage and faith to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, deny ourselves, taking up our cross and embracing the power of the gospel. And as we do so, we can be confident that when the Son of Man returns, he will reward us with, for, with life for our faithfulness. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as a people creating God's image and likeness, we pray now for those whose needs are great. For the church and its leaders, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will embolden us to give witness to God and to serve others by following the example of Jesus, we pray. Lord, we hear our prayer. For peace that world leaders may courageously work to end violence and implement steps to establish just and light-given societies, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom, that the Spirit will unshackle us for the contemporary priorities of power and wealth and renew us to live virtuously and generously, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of discernment, that the Spirit will guide us in our judgments and actions so that the gospel can be manifest in our lifestyles, families, and professions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all recovering from storms, floods, and wildfires, that God will ease their suffering, give them strength, and help them to find the resources that they need to rebuild their homes and lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or homebound, especially for those whose names we speak out loud. That they will know recovery from illness and relief from pain, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all parishioners and visitors. Those prayers submitted to our community and for our own needs and intentions. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Addie Edwards. And for those whose names we speak out loud. That they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, we pray. Lord, we hear our prayer. God of wonder, with sincere hearts we lift up these prayers on behalf of those most in need. Hear our prayer and bring us one day into your eternal presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today we have a second collection. This second collection is for death reduction. Yes. 
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now here and at home, let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace. God bless.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Catholics who are not receiving communion today, as well as those of other religious traditions, are invited to come forward in the procession to receive a blessing. Crossing your arms across your chest will indicate to the minister that you wish to receive a blessing. Please join us in singing our communion song. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart. To fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. Snow, the 
sun for pear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be wish you a blessing week, and I know tomorrow is Labor Day. Uh, the word labor means work, right? So I don't know if any of you are exempted from not working tomorrow. 
and tomorrow is my day off, so I'll be up anyway. I, uh, anyway, whatever the case, enjoy the day, enjoy the week, and remember always that, uh, you know, picking up the cross is, uh, is something that us disciples have to do. Whatever the cost, that's what we do. We have to be down on the cross and keep going, going towards our Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go out into the world glorifying the Lord by the way we live our lives. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to Him and bless Him. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Power he has wielded, honor is his garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Sing out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and Spirit of our God most high, solace for the weary, pardon for the sinner, splendor of the living God. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with the trumpet, praise God with the saxophone. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God till the end of days. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him.